Hi, it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori. We're recording live. My guests are with me from all over the world. Everything's unscripted. I'm going to show you what to look for because that's going to help you. And of course, I'm going to look at the objects that people have. Show me what you got. Let's see what my guests have got. Everybody should have their cameras horizontal. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see what we've got. No, that's not. Well, uh, let's see. There's too much glare on the picture in the frame, and it looks like we've got a ceramic figurine. What's this ceramic figurine? Let's take a look. Looks like two children near a bed. <laughs> Can't really see it yet. Hi, oh, Dr. Cool. Lori. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Lori from Indiana. Hi, Lori. What have you got here? So it's two little children saying their prayers. Yes, and I think it's on, um, it's S-A-N-K-Y-O Japan, and I think it's um, it's on a music box, round, round bass, yes. and so it, it circulates, and I think it's saying the Lord's Prayer. Okay, so uh, is it, don't play a music box, but is it music, or, or, or does it actually say the words of the Lord's Prayer? Just music. Okay, I see. So, um, that piece, uh, a Sankyo piece, are, they're made in the middle part of the 20th century. They're relatively low quality ceramic pieces. They're mass produced in large numbers. What do you look for to identify them? Very, very thin paint. You're like, what's thin paint, Dr. Lori? Well, it's not very thickly applied. It's very thin uh, as if they watered it down with turpentine. And mm -hmm. you can see it when you look at the actual figures. If you hold one of the if you hold the piece up to the camera a little bit closer, if you can for me, Lori. There you go. You can see it in actually the uh, dressing gowns of the children. They're not very, very heavily or thickly applied pigment. It is mm -hmm. hand painted. You can even see it on sort of that area that looks almost like a tablecloth, like the beds on a ta like a table. That's yes. the same type of thing. So inside, of course, is the music box. It dates to about the 1950s, 1960s. How'd you acquire it? Um, I got it at Goodwill. Nice. What'd you pay? A couple bucks? Actually, I paid six, which is more than I usually will pay, but... Six yeah. is a little high for this because yeah. it's only worth about 15. Okay. Yeah. I mean, could you get 20 on a good day? It's got to be a really good day. It's got The sun's got to be shining. <laughs> the temperature has to be good. It's got to be a good day, Lori. So yeah, about $15 retail based on actual sales records for a piece like that. And have you signed up for my newsletter where I give you tips and I... I've had that for a long time. Good, good. It's easy to do. Just go to drlorev.com and put yes. in your email. We'll send it to you. There's tips. We show you where what the deals are, all different kinds of information that I reveal there. So get on the newsletter. It's easy to do, and we're happy to provide it for you. My question of the day is about pasta. You ready? Ready. Do you prefer penne or spaghetti? Spaghetti. Spaghetti, you like to twirl? <laughs> you like to twirl? Spaghetti all day. Are, yeah, my favorite are shells. I don't know if you know about shells. Little medium shells. They keep Thank the you so much. Sauce in there. Yeah, I like those too. Nice to see you. Thanks for being with me. Ceramic pieces, you want to think about quality, quality, quality. And a lot of those mid-century pieces made abroad are not always of high quality. So you've got to look for the best ones that you can. I'll show you what to look for. Stay right here. My guests are here. Let's see what they've got. All right. We've got a Moorcroft piece. We've got a piece here, a blue-white in the Canton oh, style. Yeah. We've got a piece that's uh, that person's not horizontal. That person's not horizontal. So I'm going back to Moorcroft. I'm going to the bulbous vase right here. Uh, made by Moorcroft, of course, the British ceramic pottery. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, it's Melanie from Vancouver Island. Hi, Melanie. So tell me about this piece of Moorcroft. Okay, I got it from the thrift store the other day on Tuesday, and I couldn't actually believe it. I saw this sticker and I thought maybe it's fake, but it's marked on the bottom as well. Yeah, no, it's not a fake piece at all. No. <laughs> and it indicates and it indicates where it's made as well, correct? Yeah, it says. What does it say? Read it for it says, us. Made in England. Yeah. So of course, the British okay. pottery ceramic firm of Moorcroft, very, very popular. And they're known for this dark ceramic, right? Nice formed pieces. Can I not see the mark? Can I see the side of the piece? Yeah. We've seen the mark now. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> This is what's beautiful about Moorcroft, and this is what I want you all to see. It's sort of like splatters of color. It's very beautiful glaze. They do a wonderful handwork. 
And of course, it's very popular in the 1950s. Uh, of course, the British, uh, the British pottery firm, really lovely pieces. And this one's small, but it's going to have a pretty good value. So tell me about, uh, it was at the thrift store. How much did you pay? Five dollars. <laughs> Five dollars is great. Yeah. And it's about, would you say it's six inches tall or is it a little smaller? It's three inches. About it's three, three inches. inches. So it's a teeny yeah. teeny. Yeah. Okay. A little one. <laughs> well, a teeny, teeny, a teeny, teeny Moorcroft is still going to be about $70. So you did very well for the $3 investment, Melody. That's great. Excellent. And it's beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. I agree with you. You know, good things come in small packages. So that's a pretty piece. I like it a lot. Very high quality uh, ceramic as well. Notice how bright and white the underside is. If you show us the underside, nice bright white clay. That's always a tip. If you're looking for a good ceramic, high quality, without impurities, you're seeing, of course, that nice bright white clay. I like that a lot. Hey, my question of the day, penne or spaghetti? Um, I like spaghetti, probably more like right spaghetti. now. My kids, with or with, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say my kids, they won't eat spaghetti. So whenever I get it, it's like a treat now. <laughs> Oh, really? Why? Worms or something? Why don't they like spaghetti? I don't know. We were living in Australia and it was very popular there and they just weren't into it. <laughs> Maybe they got their fill, you know? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they got their fill. Well, it's nice to see you. Have you had a video call with me yet, uh, Melanie? Not yet, no. <laughs> okay, well, the video calls are very easy to do. You can book them right in your schedule with my schedule. I show you my schedule, you pick a time that works for you. You need to do a video call, Melanie. Maybe I'm getting one for Christmas. Oh, that would be good. <laughs> Gift certificates for video calls are always a good gift. Nice to see you, hon. Thank you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, Moorcroft. When you see it, you know, these main, these major names, you got to grab them at the thrift store. Uh, and a lot of them are right there. Make sure you look for condition, right? Make sure there's no chips or cracks, inclusions or abrasions, scratches and damage. Make sure you look for good quality and condition. But again, I'm going to show you what to look for on all of these pieces. I'm going to help you out, learn how to resell it too. So I'm Dr. Lori. My guests are here from all over. Let's see what they've got. So we've got some prints and we've got some glare. We've got some frame pieces. Let's see what else we got. I can't see that one because of where it is. Uh, the cat, and I'm looking at something that looks might be a might be a ring, but I can't tell. And it is. A ring. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with this piece that looks like it is Asian. It looks like it's in a frame. It looks like it's a branch of a tree. It won't focus. Am I close? No. And some of you are not focusing because you're too close to the camera, so you got to back up. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How you doing? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm Donna. I'm in Hi, Maine. Donna. Where are you from, hon? I'm in Maine. I'm sorry, I stepped on your words there, Donna. I apologize. <laughs> I, I do I'm that. in Maine, up in New England in Maine. I remember New England. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, sweetheart. I'm fine. Yeah. Um, so this piece is quite nice. So this is an Asian piece, and it looks like it's actually hand-painted. It looks like it's a gouache, right? That's watercolor and oil. You know, that's sort of the simplistic idea about gouaches. How did you acquire this? I was at Goodwill. It was the gray sticker day. So instead of 15, I got it for 750. And I got a loop. I ordered a loop and from your site. And you. I saw that it's actually fabric. It's a silk, I guess. Oh, it's painted onto silk. Uh-huh. And yeah. Very nice. That's not and that is not uncommon or atypical of the 1950s in Asia, particularly Japan, where we see silk painting throughout the history of art, Japanese art. But in the 1950s, pieces like these become very popular for, of course, the Western market for Europe and, and America, North America, and this kind of thing. So that's a nice piece. How big is it? I'm thinking it's about 18 inches tall. I put my, my arm to it. Good, good. Doesn't that help? That helps. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that tip I gave you, like I said, you know, how tall are you? Measure your arm because your arm's always with you, you know, God willing, <laughs> right? So your arm's always with you when you're at the thrift store. You can use it as a measuring tool. Um, the other tips are things like magnetic bracelets, you know, and make sure that you have your loop with you all the time. Anyway, I have a lot of tips. Watch the videos. There are all kinds of tips. So a couple of things about this. You told me that it was price dipper day or you got 15% off. What was the final cost that you paid? $7.50. $7.50 for this piece. Okay. So first thing I don't like, I don't like a piece of textile under glass. Why? 
all of the framer people will say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, you could do that. But your piece doesn't have a mat, it doesn't have a spacer, it's right up against the glass. So deter it's gonna deteriorate faster because uh, condensation, dirt, uh, and a little bit of humidity is gonna get in there and then the piece is gonna start to deteriorate. So I don't like textiles under glass, not samplers, not pieces like this. So try to get a, a spacer or a mat and if you wanna refuse the same frame, you may. Value on that piece, about $45. It's nice for your $7 investment. You made what, seven times? Seven times seven is 49, is that still math? I think so. So basically that's what you're looking at. That's nice, seven times what it's really worth. That's great. Hey. Can I ask you about the back? Uh, show me the back. It's, it's made of wood. Yeah, the back is wood. That's also gonna off gas onto it. So that's problematic as well. So you've got glass in the front and then you've got wood in the back and you've got it sandwiching this piece of textile and the whole thing's gonna off gas. So you gotta okay. get it out of there, unfortunately. Will do, thank you so much. Have you used the binge link? I, I bet, I just been discovering that, yeah. The binge link is easy to find at drlaurieV.com. Just scroll down on my specials and shop page. You'll see a big red button. Click on it, save it, and use that binge link because you know what it does? It puts everything in order so you don't have to search because, heck, we're always searching. Who wants to keep searching? It'll basically make it all organized for you. Before you go, penne or spaghetti? Penne with vodka sauce. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so that, that pink vodka sauce is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See you later. All See kinds you. of tomato sauces are good, but the pink sauce and the red sauce and the clam sauce, actually any pasta is good in my book. Oh, I'm Dr. Lori. What fun we're having. I've got guests from all over the world joining me. Look at your objects, show you what to look for so you can, of course, collect beautiful pieces for yourself or, of course, flip them for top dollar. Let's see what they've got. I wanted to take a look at this um, blue and white trinket box because a lot of you talk about blue and white pieces. A lot of you submit blue and white pieces to my website, um, but I want to take a look at that trinket box if I may. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? What's your first name? I'm Kelly. I'm calling in from the Poconos in Pennsylvania. Hello, Kelly. So tell me about this piece. This is a lidded trinket box, blue and white ceramic in the Canton style. How'd you acquire it? How much did you pay for it? So I acquired this at a local furniture store that was going out of business. Okay. And while everyone else was there looking for deals on the furniture, uh, I of course was there looking for any of their trinkets for sale. That's where I acquired this. Um, there were a set of five. I have all five. They are uh, made by a company called Maitland and Smith. It's marked yep. on the bottom. Yep, very famous, Maitland and Smith. Did you know Maitland and Smith when you saw it? We've talked about it here on the channel before. No, oh. no, I didn't. I oh. looked it up and see if I found it. Okay. okay, well, good, well, good. Maitland and Smith actually makes furniture. They also make accessory pieces. They're very popular. And, um, of course, if you had some Maitland and Smith furniture, we talk about pretty big numbers. So you have five of those. And that particular piece is trying to look like Canton ware, Asian China, from, from China, the, the country, from China, Asian pieces of bone China, uh, with, of course, bone ash and feldspar and uh, kaolin, porcelain, and the like. So you have five of these trinket jars, all the same size? Uh, no, varying in sizes. I'm varying some sizes. Some are eggs, some are round. Some are good. Okay, so, so let's talk only about the big one. The biggest one, how much did you pay for it at the going out of business sale? $12, I think, for the biggest. $12. The so $12, that piece is worth $30. So you did okay for the biggest piece. So, you know, doubled your money, a little more than doubled your money. So you did pretty well on that. But Maitland Smith is a good name. And these are some of the things I want you to le learn about. M-A-I-T-L-A-N-D Smith is the name of it. And uh, again, if you've got the original label or the original mark, that's always gonna help you. Always protect the labels and the marks and look for, again, the consistency. If you show me the, the bottom, notice those lines that go around the cover and go around the bottom. So that, that continuous blue line is what you look for. And that's where Maitland and Smith is actually gonna go the extra mile than some other of these you know, uh, trinket manufacturers of trinket boxes like that. It's a nice piece. 
you know, you can put potpourri in it and put it in a living room or it just makes a piece, it just makes a living room sort of have that accessory pieces. They're always important when you're doing interior design. My question of the day for you is penne or spaghetti? Spaghetti, but you have to have the meatballs. That's right. Yeah, you got to have the meatballs, not just spaghetti, you know. Now, you got to have something to twirl it around, right? Absolutely. So Maitland and Smith and a lot of these, of course, major names, you want to start to learn those names. I teach them to you right here. I show you which ones. I show you the marks. I want you to know these particular things. But when it comes to Maitland Smith, yeah, the accessories are nice, but you're really looking for the furniture. If she saw an end table for a steel that was a Maitland Smith, she should have picked that up. All right. And you can find them at the thrift store when you're treasure hunting. Treasure hunt with me. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD antiques appraiser. My guests are here from all over the world. Let's see what they have. Let's see if I can show you what to look for on all different types of art antiques and collectibles. Okay, let's see what we've got. Hard to see that, hard to see that, hard to see all of these. Okay, all right, stained glass. Someone's standing there in their sweatshirt. Hello, sweatshirt person. Hello, hi there. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> oh, there they are, the North Face. I'm gonna go with this ring. It's got three very large, it looks like three large um, emerald cut uh, stones. The woman's wearing a white sweater. Let's start with that. We can get to her. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. It's Janet from Sherman, Connecticut. Hi, and Janet. How are things? I'm great. How are you? You're great. Great. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you, hon. So tell me, how did you acquire this? All right. So this was my dollar find at a tag sale. And oh. I thought it was, you know, just costume jewelry, but I liked it because my yes. jewelry was stolen from my house. But oh. someone said, gee, that looks a little real. So I want, was wondering. Okay, so did you test it with the Presidium gem tester? No, or did I you go to a G I didn't, but it, it does, it is 925, so it's sterling the setting. Okay. But I didn't have a chance to do anything else. Okay, so let, let's talk a little bit about it. First of all, um, the Presidium Gem Tester is one of my recommended products. You can buy it at drlorev.com if you think you're going to use it enough, you know. Okay. Um, and I do get compensation when you buy one of our recommended products. Here's the other thing. You can find it on the specials and shop page, click on it, and then choose what you like. A couple of different things about that piece. First of all, it's set in 925 and it's marked 925. It, right. They do look like very green, mossy, almost sort of uh, a little bit too mossy for emeralds for the color and also for the um, intensity. Emeralds are usually quite um, uh, dense in their coloration and they're more green. This is a nice piece. This could be many different types of stone. So this is why we ask about the gemstone tester. Garnets can even be green. Different stones can be different colors. My birthstone. I do think that you probably have at least synthetic or lab grown stones, okay? I don't think they're just pieces of glass. Okay. And it has, to do, it has to do with the way in which it sparkles. Now, if it's sterling silver and marked 925, right out of the chute, you've got a setting that's worth at least 75 to $150, somewhere in there. Looks like there's a lot of weight to the setting. Can you show it to me? Maybe you can show me the other side of the setting. I know it's hard with your hands and the, there you go. So that looks like a pretty strong setting. The other thing about this setting is notice the open work at the top and the bottom to let light come through. Oftentimes a manufacturer will want the light to come through to show you again the coloration of the stones. So that's one of the other tips I want you to look for. I want you to look for metal that's been punched out to allow the light to come through. Sometimes it's a square or a diamond and sometimes it's like hers which actually, if she shows me the top, so I can show everybody this, right there, you can see that it's sort of punched out, like almost filigree work. That's another symbol of usually at least a lab-grown stone. So let's assume they're lab-grown. Let's assume they're, eh, maybe they're iolite, maybe they're on the lower end of the scale, like garnet, for example. I would say value on that piece, just about $100, $125 on a good day based on actual sales records. Um, you paid a buck, thought it was costume. <laughs> At least you got the sterling silver. So right there, you're doing quite well. Great. Thank you, Dr. Lori. My pleasure. I like it. I hope you wear it in good health. Wear all Thank your you. jewelry in good health. And um, let me ask you this. Do you get my newsletter? I do. 
I do. Good. And I am I, going to book you for um, an appraisal because my paintings keep having a glare and you can't see them. So I'm going well, to I'll be, you. I'll be, I'll be happy to do the appraisal. You can always send in uh, photos to our website too at drlaurieV.com. You know, it's find values and then click on send a photo. You can do it that way too, okay. but you can have video calls. The video calls are easy to book. And of course you can book them right in my schedule and you can do a short video call for just a, a couple of pieces or a long video call. If you want me to go through the whole house, if you're downsizing or you're settling in a state or something like that, it's up to you. It's nice to see you before you go. What do you like penne or spaghetti? I cannot choose. I love them both. Oh. I love, I love the both. pasta. What could I say? I'm Italian. You're, you're like me. We Italians. We like our pasta. There you go. I like shells. I like the little shells. And my mom loved shells. She used to make them with brie and red sauce. Oh, nice. That Very sounds great. Good. Yeah. <laughs> my mother would let us choose. You know, she had all of us and she'd say, okay, it's Lori's turn to choose. I would always say, we have to have shells. <laughs> you know, so I like They're them. the best. Nice to see you. Thank you. Bye -bye. My pleasure, my pleasure. So yes, when you're looking again at jewelry, whether it's costume or fine jewelry, I want you to look at elements that will clue you into whether or not you have a high quality piece or a low quality piece. One of those tips is the one I gave you right here, the, where you have the metal that's open so the light can get through and actually allow a reflection in those gemstones. So look for that too. I'm gonna show you all the tricks right here on, right here on my videos. So my guests are here, let's see what they've got. Let's talk about this bracelet. Looks like it's a bracelet. Looks like it might be a bangle bracelet. Yes. Hi, Dr. Yeah. Lori. Can you hear Hi, me? I can hear you. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm Dottie Navarez from San Bernardino. Hi, Dottie. What's happening? Not a whole lot. I'm working hard to get on here live, but you know, I don't want to take up other new people's space. So Well, that's very thought... nice of you to be considerate of that. We want everybody <laughs> to get a chance. Well, we yeah, want everybody to get a chance. I don't want to hear people belly aching either because I can't stand <laughs> that. But I will say, and the reason why is because, you know, I want everybody is able to do the same. Everybody has the same option. They all have the mm -hmm. same chance. So what I want you guys <laughs> to do is, you know, Dottie, if you know, hey, you know what? I want to, I want, there's certain things. Or you also know, I can get to Dr. Laura. I can send her in a photograph for free. Or I can book a video <laughs> call by having the objects, whatever it might be. So show me your bracelet, hon. But I don't want to discourage any of you. I want you all to participate. Okay, so how did you acquire this? It looks like it's got gold tone metal and it looks like it's a bangle. Do you just push it on or do you have, will it open? You push it on. It's, yeah. it's cost. Those bracelets are hard. Those bracelets are hard. I, heard, I could hear, feel my hand getting crushed. <laughs> no. Yes, it's a, it is a bangle. It is gold tone. It is yeah. costume jewelry. Um, but what intrigued me is that the, the depth of the color of the stone, it's probably glass, but the prongs are nice and solid around them. And there's no stones that are missing. Great. Mm -hmm. okay. There's unfortunately there's no mark. I originally thought it was a Monet costume jewelry, but there's not any marking on it. It looks a little bit more Avon to me than Monet. Oh, okay. Avon. That's just me. Now it would have a mark. The Avon no would mark. have a mark though. And so I used no my mark. loop. I used, used my loop. loop. Okay, so you didn't find a mark. Okay, I have to say that it's nice that there are no dead crystals or dead rhinestones, right? Yes. None of them are, you know how they when when they when I say they go dead, a lot of you know what that term is, but a lot of you don't. That means that they basically don't have any sparkle at all, and sometimes they're gray when they should be colorless, mm -hmm. or the blue goes to a gray. So it's just yes. basically over time they tend to sort of lose their luster, their their sparkle. Those mm -hmm. are still sparkling. We can see it right yes. here. How much did you pay for it? Where did you get it? Let me see if I can. Oh, Goodwill, five ninety nine. Okay. And I, it was just laying there, and it was so pretty. The colors, like you said, the the the, the glass was so sparkly and bright, and mm -hmm. the tone was so even. I just thought it was a good purchase for five ninety nine. The other thing about it, the other thing about it that I do like, I'll tell you what I don't like. I don't like five ninety nine for it. That's first. I think it's a okay. little high, but okay. Uh, and okay. I'm, you know me, I'm Miss Frugal. I want it really low. <laughs> right. But I have to say that I want Miss, I'm Miss Frugal for quality. The other thing that I, that's what I don't like. What I do like about it is I like the tone of the blue against the gold. I always yeah. like that. And that has nothing to do with the University of Michigan, Maize and Gold. Of course not. Blue. But 
<laughs> what that has to do with actually is the way in which those colors will actually uh, play off of each other. Right. The mm -hmm. other thing I like about it is it looks like it's a strong bangle, that it's not sort of a weak metal. So you've got yeah. a base metal that's been probably coated and it mm -hmm. goes right on. So I like that. And I like the multiple rows. It's not just one little yes. thin row, multiple rows. Two so, rows. Yes. So I like that value on that piece. I'm going to be somewhere around $30, maybe $25, okay. $30, but probably closer to 30 bucks on the retail market based okay. on actual sales records. I will say if I saw that same piece in a silver tone metal, I'd probably be at $35. Oh, okay, great. Awesome. Because most, because most people expect blue to be with silver. Silver. Oh, okay. I so didn't know it's that. An, it's an expectation in the market. Okay. It's an expectation in the market of what they think they should have. You know, we think of an mm -hmm. aquamarine and we think it should be set in white gold, not mm -hmm. in yellow gold. It's just an expectation in the market of how a certain color will look better up against a certain metal. Okay. It's okay at $5.99, but I like it to be lower. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I understand. That is a question of the day is uh, spaghetti or penne? Spaghetti. Wow, everybody's spaghetti. spaghetti. Yeah. Now, I, I would have gone with shells, but yeah. I tried shells before and I, I couldn't get them on my fork. They kept falling off. So <laughs> I was you like, forget it. it. You yeah. got to work it. Some of us know how to work that. There you go. <laughs> I'm Dr. Lori. Don't forget to share. Thanks for watching and thanks to my guests. I'll see you next time.